Looking to improve your fitness business while keeping your bottom line in good shape? Let the gym administrator help you achieve those goals. With their powerful team of fitness industry professionals at the ready, the gym administrator covers a wide range of industry-related products and services that will help you build your business and increase profits. The gym administrator works with reliable industry suppliers and vendors that place a heavy emphasis on service, just the way you remember it. Give them a call at 914-494-1066 or visit them on the web at thegymadministrator.com as well as all social media platforms. The Gym Administrator, all your fitness needs under one roof. Scan the barcode at the bottom of the screen to get started today. Same plane with Ric Flair, Valentine, Bob Bruggers, and uh, Mr. Wrestling, uh, Tim Woods. And fortunately, you were the least injured. But I wanted to talk about Tim Woods. And I, I, I'm not even sure if this is true or not. But I heard this from uh, I heard this in a Flair interview that, um, you know, there was rumors that he was on the plane with Flair, which would have been a huge breach of kayfabe. And then Woods, to, to just to dispel the rumors, uh, I think he wrestled like a week or two after the plane crash. Just so that people would think, oh, no, he couldn't have been on the in the plane because look, he's wrestling already. And uh, just to me, that's like absolutely amazing how seriously K. Fabe was taken back then. And yeah. it just, you know, now it's the polar opposite that you know you see guys who you know beat the crap, well, supposedly beat the crap out of each other on Monday Night Raw. They're going out for a beer after the match. He left that night from the hospital. He would not stay in the hospital. He left that night drove back, got a ride back to Charlotte. He had broken ribs along his spine where my head went through the seat and broke up. I had a dislocated shoulder, broken ankle, pretty bad concussion, and uh, a lot of facial injuries and about three teeth that were shattered. Uh, Mm. Nerves just hanging. Yeah. So, and I don't remember anything for about six months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and still today, I sort of remember, but I don't in that. I don't know. I can't remember what I was told or what I remember. I know Johnny Valentine, he said we were the last two people they took out of the plane. And he said, and I, I was complaining to him that I couldn't remember. And he said, David, be glad you do not remember. Right. Why would you want to remember that? Yeah. <laughs> right. really. Yeah. Well, he, you know, he said that the smell of fuel, and he did not realize he was, you know, his spine was broken. He thought his legs were hooked by some metal or something, and, and he couldn't get them out, did not realize in that. Wow. You know, he couldn't move them. Jeez. Yes. And then, yeah, and, yeah, my seat was the only seat on the plane that did not break loose. I was in the very back on the left. And, two, you know, I, I know if Rick talked about it, that, they, the pilot feathered the engine on the right side when we were around uh, Florence, South Carolina, and Lumberton, North Carolina. Both those cities have airports. Why we did not land and refuel, now he dumped fuel, so that's what happened. We ran out of gas. Why he did not land and put more fuel on, I haven't the foggiest. I know. You know, that we didn't leave, you know, because it was afternoon, maybe three o'clock, two o'clock when we left. I, I, you know, I know it was still daylight then, but I, why I didn't land, I don't know. But I, I do remember going over to Cape Fear. That's when the left side started sputtering. And the only other thing I really remember is. My son was three weeks old, so I was trying to practice Lamont so I wouldn't get the wind knocked out of me and get knocked out. Not thinking my head would go through the seat. But I saw Mm. a buzzer. I heard a buzzer and a light go off. And my father-in-law, who was a pilot, said that was the stall warning. So he had stalled the plane at some point, and that's when we went nosedive. Yeah, I, I recently saw a picture of that crash. Wow. Yeah, it I until well this year I have never seen a picture of the crash. Yikes. Didn't want to. No. Yeah. Mm. Well, excuse very me. lucky. I called Rick up 
at the anniversary and say, it's good to be alive. Oh, yeah. Give me a, considering, I mean, not, not only, it's still one of the, I don't want to call it a what if, but I mean, not just that he survived and recovered, but would go on to have arguably one of the greatest careers in the history of wrestling after that fact is still just absolutely amazingly Amazing, incredible. Yeah. It is. I mean, it is. He broke his back. Yeah, you know, cracked it, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, a crack is a break to me. But, you know, later on, he had a gallbladder uh, operation. You know, so he is one of the luckiest guys on earth, if not the luckiest. Yeah. Here he is. He almost died. I went down there to Atlanta, intensive care. You know, he, his whole body was shutting down. They had him on an alcohol drip because he was going through the DTs. You know, he's a functional alcoholic. He'll tell you that. Right. Yeah, you know, and you go, how does he do this? And then when he gets out, he wants to wrestle. You know, he said, well, you know, maybe I'll go on the gas to uh, pump up a little bit and, and wrestle again. I said, yeah, you're nuts. <laughs> but I like you. <laughs> different, it's who he, different, it's who he, who he is. I mean, right. Just... No, absolutely. <laughs> 